Thank you. Please be seated. Can we have one more round of applause for the Millican Saxophone Ensemble, please? Well, let me say good afternoon. My name is Jim Reynolds, and it's my honor to serve as the 16th president of Millican University. As an institution of higher learning, Millican University has a responsibility to acknowledge the historical context in which it exists. Thus, in the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge the land upon which we celebrate today is the ancestral home of multiple native nations. Specifically, we stand on the lands of the Peoria, Kaskaskia, Miami, Muscoutin, Meskwaki, Kikapoi, and Oketi Sakawin nations, which hold historical, cultural, and sacred significance to these indigenous people. We also acknowledge the living history and contributions of these first people communities that inhabited the land prior to the establishment of Milken University and recognize their continuing contributions which allow our campus community to flourish. Now let me welcome all of you to our December commencement exercise. Today is a wonderful day for all of us who are part of Milliken, and we're especially proud to be gathering with members of the graduating class who will be receiving their diplomas today. More than any other university event or program, commencement has very special and symbolic significance. It's the culmination of many years of hard work for our students and their families and represents a demarcation point for us all, the end of an academic generation and the going forth of educated individuals will help create a better society for all of us in which to live and work. Although our primary purpose is to pay tribute to all of you who are receiving degrees today, we also come together to recognize the collective efforts of so many, parents, spouses, guardians, significant others, children, employers, friends, family members, all of those who have played a vital role in our graduates' achievements. For many of us, today is payday. It's the time for all of us who have given our best to our students to receive a special reward, knowing that in some small way, we help to make a difference in their lives. We're grateful to be able to join with you to celebrate the accomplishments of the class of 2022. One of the major reasons why Millican University has endured since its founding in 1901 is due to the efforts of those who hold our university in their trust. Our faculty and staff members serve all of our students in important and meaningful ways and extend student learning both inside and out of the classroom. I'm grateful to them for the very good work that they've done on behalf of our students this year. Will you join me in a round of applause for our faculty and staff? As I thought about our time together today and what I might be able to say that would hold even a small bit of meaning to you, I recognize that today is one of those bittersweet times. We are glad and sad at the same time today. Glad for your accomplishments and our ability to witness them, and sad in the realization that our time together is drawing to a close. We get to be part of one of the most important days of your lives, knowing that we played a small role in getting you here to the finish line. It's incredibly rewarding, and each time we celebrate with a graduating class, it's special to all of us. Today, you're offering a gift to all of us who will remain behind at Millican University as you go off into your bright futures, and for that, we are especially thankful. Sometimes in the midst of significant events and things that will cause change in our lives, like graduating from college, we look for affirmation. A few words from someone who has an interest in us to let us know that we're on the right path, that we're good people, and that things are going to work out. We need anchors in our lives, a person or people who we know will be there for us, no matter the time or issue. All of our human experience is related to knowing that our existence is noted by others and that we count that somewhere in the big scorebook of life, we have been tallied and that we count. So today, you'll hear from students and alumni who have shared this experience with you and want to offer their reflections on their time at Millican. 
I get the honor of being the person on behalf of the university who gets to publicly tell you that you count. Your family and friends will have private times with you today and into the future to let you know how much you mean to them. My role today is to hopefully channel some of their positive energy into a public affirmation of you and to offer some words of encouragement and guidance as you begin the next chapters of your lives. Over the course of my life, I've attended or have been part of almost 50 commencement ceremonies. Some were my own, others were the ceremonies of family members, and the rest were ceremonies that I took part in to honor the accomplishments of students who were graduating from the institutions where I was a faculty member or administrator. At the first commencement ceremony over which I presided, a friend of mine, who was a trustee of the college where I was president, took me aside a few days before the ceremony and asked me if I had finished preparing my speech. When I told him that I was still working on it, he suggested I keep it short because no one would remember what I had said anyway. <laughs> At first, I was frustrated with his advice. After all, this was my first commencement and I was gonna deliver a speech for the ages, or so I thought. But as I wrote that speech, just like today, I realized that his advice was really good. It's not likely any of you will remember what I say today, and I'm comfortable with that. What's more important to me today is that you remember the feeling that you have on this very special day. Some of you are feeling proud, proud of your accomplishments and what you've done to get here today. Remember that feeling. Some of you are feeling smart and confident, knowing that you've done all that you can to prepare yourselves for the next step in your amazing journey. Remember that feeling. Others of you are feeling strengthened by the support you have from the people who are here to witness your accomplishments today. Remember that feeling. It's important to remember how you feel today because sometimes we need to remind ourselves of the feelings that we have at our very best moments in order to bridge those times when things aren't at their best. If you ever have those moments where you begin to doubt yourself, I want you to remember the feeling you have today. You have everything you need to be successful going forward. During your time here, you have gained the knowledge and the skills to claim a wonderful life for yourselves. We've taught you the mysteries of the academic discipline that you chose as your major. You've learned how to live with other people, perhaps in the most challenging environment to do so that you will ever encounter. You know how to write a good paper, solve problems, work in groups, and how to stay current in your chosen field. You've had a chance to test theories, work on your social skills, sometimes a bit too much, and have been held accountable for the things that you've done, both good and bad. You've learned to love, to play well with others, to rise above the fray, and to be true to yourselves. And today, with all of us here for your victory party, you will graduate from college something that only one in every three people in the United States can truthfully claim. If I could offer you just one bit of advice today, it would be to surrender yourselves to love and hope. They are abundant in this world, despite what the naysayers would have you believe, and you need to keep them with you at all times and in all places. This life is beautiful and wondrous, but at times it is not easy. That's why cherishing the love of friends and family and remembering the promise of hope in all situations is so important to your health and success. I would also ask that you take time today to say thanks to all those in our campus community that have played a meaningful role in your successes. They deserve the opportunity to be with you this last time before you leave campus and venture out into the world. Let them know that they meant something to you and that you're glad to have shared this time with them. I'll conclude by saying thanks to each of you. I'm thankful for what you've given to Milliken during your time here, and I speak for all of the faculty and staff of the university and say thanks for giving us the opportunity to know you and to be a small part of your exceptional lives. A president I used to work for ended each commencement ceremony by saying, go out and do well, but more importantly, go out and do good. I'll finish by saying, remember how you're feeling, class of 2022. Thank you.
It's now my pleasure to introduce the provost of Millican University, Mary Black. It is now my pleasure to introduce our student speaker, Isabella Voss. Isabella, will you please join me on the platform while I tell everyone a little bit about you. Isabella Voss is graduating with a BS in Management Information Systems and a minor in Pre-Law. Isabella is from Lockport, Illinois, and is the daughter of Shalise Voss. During her time at Millican, Isabella has learned much about herself as an individual and as a student, thanks to her professors as well as her peers. Isabella is grateful for the many opportunities she's been able to take advantage of while at Millican. Whether it was studying case law to prepare for the moot court competition, or learning how to consult with clients while working on projects, Isabella has been able to pursue her passions and learn from the guidance of others. During her three and a half years at Milliken, Isabella has been honored to serve as the president of Women in Business, the vice president of the Tabor Student Advisory Council, and a senior consultant in the student-run venture, Millican University Performance Consulting. As a member of the Honors Program and Delta Mu Delta Honor Society, Isabella has been able to develop her knowledge and to network with alumni and local businesses. More than anything, Isabella is grateful to her friends and peers for their support and patience during her time here. Isabella is speaking today on behalf of the graduating class of 2022. Her remarks are entitled, Always Learning. It's a different perspective up here for sure. <laughs> Good afternoon. So thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I just want to take a moment to kind of share in celebration with my fellow graduates. We did it. This is truly a wonderful accomplishment and I'm honored to both share in this celebration with you as well as have the opportunity to speak to you today. So I promise I am not trying to bore anyone with a history lesson right away, but I would like to highlight a couple of points regarding our university, so please bear with me. James Milliken moved to Decatur in 1856, where he continued his business ventures in livestock and real estate. Shortly after his arrival, he began a very successful banking business while continuing to serve on several boards in the community and in local industries. You see, Milliken himself was very apt to learn, and he was always learning. By participating in his local community and surrounding industries, he was constantly learning about businesses and skill sets of others, allowing him to participate in various ventures, eventually leading to his conception of Millican University. As a large proponent of holistic learning, James Millican founded Millican University in 1901 with this very specific vision, creating a university that would embrace the practical side of learning, along with the literary and classical, Consequently, his vision would create a well-rounded university where programs in classical music vie in excellence with those in accounting and the health sciences, a university where we are always learning. This vision, albeit simple, was incredibly unique and a great deal in terms of academic prospects for future students seeking higher education. This pioneering blend of academic, practical, and liberal studies provided endless opportunities for students to pursue, allowing education to mix with passion and interests. And being a student at Millican, we have been given the great privilege to seek and learn as we please, exploring the fine arts while also learning about business fundamentals, effectively encouraging students to think outside the box while presenting opportunities which have otherwise would have been unthinkable. But I digress. I know you guys have all heard this spiel one way or another. In fact, I'm sure you've experienced it firsthand. I know I have had the privilege of meeting and working with extremely talented musicians, dedicated athletes, expert programmers, innovative entrepreneurs, and the like, who have all taught me an indescribable amount. Even when we aren't in the classroom, our, classroom perpetu our campus perpetuates the sharing of skills, talents, and disciplines. Everywhere you go, whether it's in class, practice, or the library, I guarantee we are always learning. And pardon again for the another cliche, but in appreciating our time spent here, I can't help but say how fast it's gone by. In the same vein, I will refuse to admit it has been the easiest time in our lives. Whoever spouts that opinion has obviously never taken business creation. 
<laughs> Though I joke, I do believe we owe ourselves the credit for making it through the pandemic. Shifting to fully online classes in such a short amount of time while having to isolate during lockdown was difficult for all of us students and our professors. From this, our education took on a new shape and we were left to adapt, spending hours a day on our laptops and hoping to find that silver lining while we waited for the day we could return to campus and continue our, person, or our learning in person. Yet, in spite of all of these changes, we've never lost sight of James Milliken's vision for this university. It was imperative that we adapt in advance, even in light of all the uncertainty and worry surrounding our education, allowing us to find ways for interaction as well as improve the online class experience. Although we suffered from feelings of disconnection and monotony, I think it's fair to say that our dedication and determination as students paid off. It's evident to me that we would not be where we were today if this was not the case. And we owe this to ourselves. But enough about the past, we've made it, and that's an accomplishment we're celebrating as we look towards the future and continue this desire to always learn. So I understand I've started this whole message by talking about our educational experience here at Millican. Of course, we've all learned something. That's the whole reason we came to college. So to study a major and eventually walk across the stage to be handed a degree. That's the end goal, right? But it's not this goal that teaches us. It's not this goal that helps us create memories. And it's not this goal that defines our future. There's so much more that we're leaving this university with. During my time here at Millican, I've learned more from my peers than I have ever learned from any textbook or professor, though I have learned from them, I promise. And though it may be another cliche, I wouldn't be who I am today without their constant help and lasting influence. See, that's the funny thing about college is you never really know who you're gonna meet and you can never really predict how they'll impact you, good or bad. And from this, we will always be learning. So with that being said, I feel like it's only fair that I share with you what I've learned in the hopes that you might be able to do the same thing for someone else someday. First, you do not have to be a perfect person to be a good person. Regardless of who you are, what you do, or how you do it, you will never be perfect. And I think that's comforting. It's okay to make mistakes, everybody makes them, and sometimes we learn best from them. Despite wanting to do everything perfectly, I know I'm not able to, but that doesn't mean I'm not trying my best. Perfect is impossible, but learning and improving is. Second, don't take it personally. <laughs> In all honesty, I struggle with this one constantly. As much as I wanna make everyone happy all the time, I know this is unrealistic. I've spent a lot of my collegiate career working, worrying about this, and it's been exhausting. But there is value in knowing you can't please everyone. Trust me, I've tried. If all you prioritize and care about is what other people think or say, there's a good chance that you will continue in a very unhappy existence. Instead, focus on yourself and what you know instead of what they think. At the end of the day, you know yourself and that's all you need. Don't take this for granted, another cliche I know. But truly, there are so many things about college that I've enjoyed and will miss immensely. I know it sounds silly, but we'll never get to do this again. We'll never be here at the same time with the same people. So for all the memories and friends that you have, make sure you treasure them. Whether it's watching movies, late night ice cream runs, rescuing stray dogs off the train tracks, or even just working on homework together. These are the memories that will come back to you when you think about college. And that's very special. Lastly, be kind. It's such a blanket statement, but to me, this is the most important thing I've learned. If it weren't for the kindness and patience of others, I wouldn't be here today. Don't underestimate what can come from saying hi, sending a text to check in, or just being there for someone. The kindest people I know have supported me to no end when they didn't have to, and I wish to be that for someone too. You never know when someone will pay it forward. So I started my speech with a history lesson and some takeaways, so you can tell that I've done quite a few presentations to this point. <laughs> I am serious in saying our capacity to learn from these things doesn't stop here. There will always be other people and places that change us, and there's so much more for us to experience. But now is the time to give thanks for the Millican experience and give thanks for always learning. It may not have been perfect, and it surely was not easy, but it was meaningful and nothing like we predicted it to be. But that's life. As an 18-year-old senior in high school, I put my deposit in for Millican at 11.59 p.m. on May 1st, only knowing that my aunt went there several years before. So you could say I was an indecisive person. 
Obviously, I didn't picture myself speaking at commencement, nonetheless graduating in December. I didn't even know that was an option. <laughs> but I digress. Here we are with so many exciting things lying ahead. So for the graduates before me, whether you're in fine arts, arts and sciences, professional studies, or the Tabor School of Business, know how grateful I am for James Milliken's vision in creating a university where we have the privilege of learning together. Know how much you have influenced each other, directly and indirectly. And know that no matter what you plan on doing next, you will always have the memories and experiences of your time here at Milliken University. Congratulations again. You deserve it. Go Big Blue. Thank you, Isabella. Uh, in the interest of full disclosure, Isabella has been a student worker in the president's office for her time here on <laughs> campus. Um, I've enjoyed getting to know her and appreciate her really terrific words to the graduating class. This afternoon, I had the great pleasure of introducing our December commencement speaker, Erica Melton. An alumnus from the class of 2005, Erica is the director of finance, city treasurer, for the city of San Fernando in Los Angeles, California. In her career, now spanning 15 years, she has served as a dedicated public financial and performance manager in various state, municipal, and educational administrative roles. Erica is also currently a member of the 2022-2023 Coro Southern California Lead LA Cohort, working alongside like-minded change makers and community leaders in her region. Born in St. Louis, Missouri to a large, close-knit family, public service has always played a pivotal role in Erica's life. Her earliest memories include working in her church's food pantry, navigating wheelchairs in the adult daycare at her mother's job, and typing case notes for her grandmother, who advocated for children of parents with de developmental disabilities. Even more life-shaping was the recognition of resource allocation limitations that were susceptible to fluctuations with political and economic shifts. Understanding the varying fiscal and policy obstacles to meeting necessary social service needs became a point of curiosity and interest. Erica's passion for communities was decidedly sharpened to focus on public policy and financial management through her post-secondary education. Her time at Milliken University greatly nurtured this passion. Erica was an active advocate for racial equity and inclusion initiatives as president of the Black Student Union, organizer of the Multicultural Roundtable, and writer for the Office of Multicultural Affairs through the DRUM newsletter. She credits her time at the Big Blue for helping her to explore herself and become a well-rounded and global citizen through opportunities to travel abroad to Paris, providing her access and membership to a variety of organizations, including Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, Alpha Kappa Psi Professional Business Fraternity, and the Residence Housing Association. Erica on campus also worked as a financial aid office assistant and resident assistant to round out her Big Blue experience. Erica holds a master, I'm sorry, Bachelor of Science in Finance from Millican and a master's degree in public administration from Penn State University. She has served as a member of the Millican University Alumni Association Board and continues to support alumni efforts. Please join me in welcoming Erica as she delivers her speech, The Choice and Challenge to Stand. I was listening to that and that seemed like a lot. <laughs> I was like, that's me, that's my life. Well, good afternoon, first to President Reynolds, faculty, board of trustee members, honored guests, family, friends, but especially to you, the winter graduates of the class of 2022. Ooh. I will get, begin as I plan to end congratulating you on your hard work, your resilience, your completion of this portion of your journey. It is my esteemed honor to stand in your presence uh, to address you, because I recognize that I am humbly positioned between you and your diploma. 
and this is a hard place to stand right now. Um, but it is a moment that I will assure you that I understand my assignment, and so I will operate in brevity. Okay. As I introduce my topic today, let me first share with you my journey. Not through life, but rather just this past weekend. Because I decided to fly into St. Louis, which is my hometown, arriving a little bit early because I simply wanted to make and a lot enough time to honor my commitment to you all to be here. I began my travels at 345 on Friday from Los Angeles, where my best friend, who's a fellow alumni graduate, took me to uh, the shuttle, because LA is huge, and you have to travel to a shuttle place in order to then get to where the airport is. So I get to the airport, arrive, made sure I got through in enough time to make it through security, only to get an alert on my phone that they changed my gate. LAX is huge, y'all, like huge. So when they change your gate at LAX, I warn you in advance, that is now a 15 to 20 minute walk, it's okay. Because life happens. And as you will hear in my story, I always have an adventure, okay? So mind you, made my journey, 15, 20 extra minutes, got to the new gate, get on the plane. I'm situated next to some amazing people because I'm one of those great people who always talk to everyone who's on my row, not just those who are in ABC with me, but DEF as well. <laughs> so we're talking, we're having a good time. I also stopped on the way and grabbed dinner because, you know, again, it's gonna be a long flight. I'm prepared. Um, unfortunately, because I'm a talker and very uh, personable, people always have a habit of giving me extra food, which seems good on paper, except for when you're in a phase of your life where you're not trying to take extra food. <laughs> so she gives me like extra things. She's a sweetheart, but I'm like, okay. So I'm on the plane now, and we get an alert from the captain. Captain makes an alert, and he says that, um, he was notified that the flight to Hawaii uh, was delayed because the pilot who was supposed to do that flight called in sick. So he was gonna go fly that plane instead. <laughs> so mind you, I am on a plane and my pilot makes an announcement that he's going to leave and instead of going to fly me to St. Louis, he's instead going to take the flight to Hawaii. I felt like I was on the plane with Deion Sanders and he decided to leave us for a better place and left us for Colorado because that was more money for him and better opportunity. But in any case, my plane is now no longer leaving. So again, we're stuck in this place. It's very interesting, very peculiar. But I'm the one who's smiling because I'm talking to the people who are next to me. And remember, I've got dinner. So while everyone else is grumbling and upset, I'm eating mac and cheese and uh, oatmeal cookie. So I'm fine. For the next 30 minutes or so, we receive intermittent updates regarding the airplanes, airlines attempt to acquire new staff for our plane. Um, it took about another 20 minutes or so. So not, mind you, on a plane for about an hour. Um, that they still hadn't yet coordinated a solution, so they've asked us to deplane at this point. Everyone on the plane is irritated, like, mind you, upset. They're taking their bags down. And I was like, oh, that's right. My bag got checked at the gate, even though I had a carry-on, so I don't even have to grab anything. I'm fine. So again, walk off the plane with a smile. As everyone else congregates at the area in front of the airline attendants, you know, upset and trying to figure out the next step, I decide to cross the aisle because I'm like, well, when they finish, they'll make an announcement. I'm going to save and make sure that my energy is intact because I need to make sure that the energy that I preserve is right because I've, I've got work to do. Minutes later, the airline attendant comes over the intercom, finally. He announces that they found us a pilot. However, the flight will leave at nine o'clock instead of 6.30, adding an additional two and a half hours. And on top of that, they changed our gate to, you guessed it, back to the gate that I had walked from originally. 
Everyone else is mad. I pack up my purse because I don't have a carry-on and I'm like, I already know the way. At about 8.45 after getting to the new gate, we get a new alert. In anticipation of the fact that it's okay, we're getting ready to board, everyone looks down at their phones, I hear everyone else is peeing. Instead, it's an alert that we will leave the next morning at 9 a.m. Everyone else throws up their hands in frustration. I was like, well, I guess I get to sleep in my bed tonight. I pack up, I head home. Part of the reason that I'm sharing this to you today is because I simply want to declare that I made it. <laughs> and although it is a, an adventurous story, part of the reason that I also share that with you is because it's also an illustration of my superpower. And I discovered part of that superpower by being here at Milliken, that I will always carry peace, always. And so while others around me get jolted by life and what happens, I learned early on that my job is always to carry peace. And so that's part of the message that I bring with you today. Because as I celebrate the fact that, granted, we're not talking about a weekend for you. We're talking about the months, the years, the hours that you dedicated to your study. We're talking about you working and being resilient in the midst of a pandemic. We're talking about all of the friendships that you made while you were here. You made it beyond just this weekend. And so as we celebrate that, and as I bring with you the peace that is within my superpower, part of the question that I now have the challenge of offering you is how do you prepare, prepare for what's next? I share this journey as an introduction to the address for three primary reasons. One is because I really did struggle. This is version eight of my speech to you all. I just want you to know version seven was cool. It was adequate. It was even appropriate for the occasion, but it was not nearly as exciting and certainly not as authentic. Point two, for research purposes, I did poll about 10 or so friends and family members, and I asked them what they specifically recalled from their commencement addresses. Results in survey says, seven out of 10 didn't even remember the name of the speaker. <laughs> and of the 10, only one had a recollection of the title and the overall message. I polled myself, that was me. I did, I remembered. And thirdly, in crafting this message, I did approach my sister, um, who's just an amazing person, and I always go to her for advice. And she probably gave me the best advice. She told me to take a minute at home in my own space and to think about what I wish someone had told me. Taking all that into consideration, the message that I want to share with you is not only a message, but as this is a commencement exercise, we will be exercising what I'm sharing with you today in the form of, as you take your stand on this stage, how you should stand. It seems, you know, a little, you know, boring, pretty simplistic, but the notion is that life passes us by so quickly that we forget to just stand in the moment. This is your opportunity as you stand on the mountaintop of your, your achievement. It's your opportunity to really take it in. And not only to take it in, but to use it as a life lesson for how you will take in the next achievement because there will be so many more. And so we'll use today to practice. So point one, as you figure, and we navigate this, because again, you're getting ready to stand. Point one is to figure out what you're standing on. I am so glad that Dr. Reynolds has already given honor and land acknowledgement because that's so important, so important for us to have an understanding of the ground upon which we stand. This is not ground that we have tilled. This is not a space that we have crafted. And yet there are bricks. There's everything in its place in order for you to be here today in this moment. 
So part of this moment is for us to feel our feet firmly on the ground. Please do that with me now. Just take a moment. Feel where you're standing. Be mindful of it. Take it all in. Know that this moment was exquisitely and purposefully designed for you to be here today on December 11th, 2022, in order for you to be conferred your degree. And every decision and every step up to this point has made space for this to take place. How cool is that? What an honor it is to feel the ground right now that was designed just for you in this moment. The second point is to be mindful of who you stand with. As we continue in the holiday season, of course, it's a wonderful time for us to be with others that we love, that we cherish. But there are so many that have been a part of this journey with you. There are people who supported you financially, emotionally. There's, of course, the faculty, the staff that have supported and it poured into you in terms of your education. Now is the time to look to your left, to your right, to look behind you to those who are sitting in the rows behind you to honor them. In fact, even though we're going to stand on the stage, I think it's an opportunity for us to wiggle a little bit into the class. Let's stand, let's turn around, and let's honor those who are present with us today because they're part of the reason that we're here. So let's just take a moment, moment, turn around, look at those who have been here for you, and let's celebrate them. Thank you. This is practice. This is our opportunity to reflect on their sacrifices, their words of encouragement, the lessons that they've taught you, their investment in your being and in this moment. Know that they wouldn't even take one second or sent back. And as we re remember their contribution to their journey, we've practiced how to honor that moment. Finally, point three is to remember what you stand for. Consider everything that you did and the fact that you completed what you set out to do. Yes, the paperwork is great, but it's not in, in and of itself the mission. The mission was to come here and to learn and to be educated, not just edu educated in, in terms of just getting a diploma, but also learning how you learn learning what it takes for you as an individual so that you can continue in your learning journey. Going back to my plane experience, once I finally did board on Saturday morning, um, I realized that one of the people who I was setting, sitting next to happened to be a mayor of one of the, city, um, of one of the adjacent cities in St. Louis. Um, he and I chatted about the trajectories of our careers because we're both govies. That's what we call government workers, by the way. <laughs> Covies. Um, so we started talking about the political landscape in Missouri. Um, and somewhere along the way, I ended up transitioning and talking about my work in equity and anti-racism. For some reason, it got contentious at that moment because older gentlemen, anti-racism, uh, when we started talking about other ways and policies that that played in, it just jolted him a little bit. We ended up navigating the conversation back on the right road by me specifically talking about my life lens and the way that I work. And specifically, I explained that as a public service, my role is to navigate people who have little or no knowledge of government operations through various programs, practices, and policies. As a decision maker, my job is to take into consideration each of those policies, programs, and ensure that there is more healing than harm. Once determine the people that are most harmed by programs, policies, that's where my true work begins, because then I can mitigate them from harm and everyone else's standard is elevated. Meaning if I make sure that the lowest common denominator is fixed and remedied, everyone benefits. 
That's powerful. And it's a powerful lens in through which I work. And even though he and I disagreed on various points, we agreed on that. And I decided that I would continue to explain and to explore what I stand on through that experience. Nelson Mandela once said, I never lose. I either win or I learn. And I'm still working on becoming more comfortable in terms of my life stance. And just know that after this moment, that will ever be a work in progress for you. But as you stand in this moment, you're standing upon that which you've stood and what you've learned here. And you'll continue to evolve in that. So as we prepare to stand, I want you to consider who you are, what you stand for. Recognize that it can and it will change. Honor yourself, give yourself grace, allow yourself to enter each room with your glass never full so that you can have space to both pour into others and be poured into. I'm gonna conclude because I told you I would be brief and I wanna honor that because I'm looking at these degrees and I'm looking at you looking at me at these degrees. <laughs> But I do always carry a song in my heart because I'm a long-standing music lover. And um, my friends know that every time we talk, there will always be a song that comes with it because I know lyrics to pretty much every song. I'm kind of the queen of karaoke. But I wanna conclude by sharing only a chorus of one of my favorite um, songs, which is by Donnie McClurkin. And the words simply state, after you've done all you can, you just stand. The song's verses are made up of inquiries at various life roads about what you do after you get to that point. After the defeats, after the accomplishments, after the battles, after the victories, after all that, what do you do? You just stand. As you prepare for your degree conference, I encourage you to stand. Remember what you stand for. Remember who stood with you. Remember how you stood. Remember it all and stand in your power. Stand in that freedom, stand at it all. Honor it all by observing its full value. Make sure to look around and remember all of it. Don't lose sight of this because you'll need it for the next portion of your journey. Thank you again and congratulations to you, the graduates of winter 2002. Thank you, Erica, for your thoughtful and inspiring remarks. And now, to the heart of the afternoon, our reason for coming together today, the conferring of the valued and honored Millikan degree. I would like to introduce Dr. Chris Cunnings, co-dean of the College of Professional Studies, who will present the candidates for the Doctor of Nursing Practice from the College of Professional Studies. Will the candidates for the Doctor of Nursing Practice degree from the College of Professional Studies please rise? President Reynolds, I present to you today these candidates who are eligible for the Doctor of Nursing Practice degree from the College of Professional Studies. By the authority vested in me by the State of Illinois and the Millikan Board of Trustees, and on behalf of the faculty of Millikan University, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Nursing Practice with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Jessica Afua Ade.
Jessica Jo Allenbaugh. Leah Marie Cummings. <laughs> Jason David. Nathaniel James Gibson. Lauren Elizabeth Horvey. Taylor Michelle Hall. <laughs> Courtney Janik. David Janish. <laughs> Clarissa Latula. Adam Michael McGurl. <laughs> Dorothy Wanjeru Bondo. Francis Abiola Oke. <laughs> Catherine Mary Strompolis.
Please join me in congratulating these candidates upon receiving their Doctor of Nursing Practice degree today. It is my pleasure to introduce R.J. Podeski, Dean of the Tabor School of Business, who will present candidates for the Master of Business Administration degree. Will the candidates for the degree Master of Business Administration from the Tabor School of Business please rise. President Reynolds, I present to you today these candidates who are eligible for a Master of Business Administration degree from the Tabor School of Business. By the authority vested in me by the State of Illinois and the Millican Board of Trustees, and on behalf of the faculty of Millican University, I confer upon you the degree Master of Business Administration with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. In absentia, Shaquille R. Barker Thomas. <laughs> Danielle Elizabeth Beard. <laughs> Gabrielle Nicole Correa. Mackenzie Elise Dixon. In absentia, Caleb Jonathan Michael Ferguson. In absentia, Jordan Mika Hildebrand. Matthew Stevens Kern. <laughs> Benjamin Brita Prishing. In absentia, Brandon Allen Rowe. In absentia, Gabriel Jesse Surya. In absentia, Connor Sean Woods. Please join me in congratulating these new Millican graduates. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Nancy Curtin, Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, who will present candidates for the Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degrees. Will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science from the College of Arts and Sciences please rise? President Reynolds, I present to you today these candidates who are eligible for a Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science degree from the College of Arts and Sciences. By the authority vested in me by the State of Illinois and the Millican Board of Trustees, and on behalf of the faculty of Millican University, I confer upon you the degree Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degrees come forward, please? Kimberly Ann Boyd. <clears throat> Graduating summa cum laude, Colin William Budd.
In absentia, Deanna Elise Burton. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, Evan Cook. <laughs> Tyrese Hines, Jr. Levante Allen Kelly. Ronnie Avando Gomez. Nanette Ariel Perez. Graduating magna cum laude, Savannah Prezun. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, Madison Brooke Robertson. Ariana Spiegel. <laughs> An honors and long Vandenberg scholar graduating summa cum laude, Jasmine Monique Ash. An honor scholar graduating magna cum laude, Hannah Grace Cunningham. <laughs> graduating magna cum laude, Caitlin Renee Hinton. <laughs> Nicholas Houston. Leah Nicole Jackson. <laughs> David Cabalisa. <laughs> An honors and long Vandenberg scholar, graduating cum laude, Aaron Catherine Klausing. Graduating summa cum laude, Shelby Lynn McKenzie. <laughs> Justin Mylizewick. <laughs> Sarah Marie Upchurch. An honor scholar graduating magna cum laude, Kyla M. Voss. In absentia, Addison Grace Wagner. Please join me in congratulating these new Millican graduates. It is now my pleasure to introduce Laura Ledford, Dean of the College of Fine Arts, who will present candidates for degrees from the College of Fine Arts. Will the candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Music, and Bachelor of Fine Arts in the College of Fine Arts please rise.
President Reynolds, I present to you today these candidates who are eligible for a Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Music, or Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from the College of Fine Arts. By the authority vested in me by the State of Illinois and the Millican Board of Trustees, and on behalf of the faculty of Millican University, I confer upon you the degree Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Music or Bachelor of Fine Arts with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Graduating with Bachelor of Arts degrees, graduating magna cum laude, Eva Catherine Comerford. <laughs> Zachary Philip Cook. An honor scholar graduating cum laude, Taylor Faith Davis. Yeah. Kev Dionysus. An honor scholar graduating summa cum laude, Allison Marie Durham. Jasmine Kali Renee Humphrey. <laughs> Therese Thomas Kahuku Okalani Isaiah Lee. <laughs> An honors and presidential scholar graduating summa cum laude, Rebecca Aaron Murphy. and with Bachelor of Music degrees, Cecilia Marie Antonelli. <laughs> Caitlin Ann Block. <laughs> Hannah Marie Carinzi. Brittany Lee Conover. <laughs> Dalton Lee Crum. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, Madison Lynn Leak. <laughs> Kara Mallory Sheridan. And now for the fine arts degrees, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Chloe Louise Jankosek. <laughs> Graduating cum laude, Sage Belinda Lash. <laughs> Margaret Ann Luckenbill. Graduating summa cum laude, Lindsay Marie Thompson. Please join me in congratulating these new Millican graduates. It's my pleasure to once again introduce Dr. Chris Cunnings, co-dean, who will present candidates for the Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Arts degrees from the College of Professional Studies. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degrees from the College of Professional Studies please rise. President Reynolds, I present to you today these candidates who are eligible for a Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degree from the College of Professional Studies. By the authority vested in me by the State of Illinois and the Millican Board of Trustees, and on behalf of the faculty of Millican University, I confer upon you the degree Bachelor of Science or Bachelor of Arts with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Bachelor of Arts, Jada Smith. <laughs> 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 
Bachelor of Science, graduating summa cum laude, Mario Becerra. <laughs> graduating magna cum laude, Jennifer Ann Brammel. <laughs> Katera Catrice Clark. Graduating summa cum laude, Alexis Janelle Doyle. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, Gretchen Ann May Gould. <laughs> Elian Angel Martinez. Graduating summa cum laude, Kate Eileen McRae. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, Brianna Renee Mitchell. <laughs> Satara Nicole Lynn Nelson. Graduating magna cum laude, Danielle J. Nylub. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, Kelsey Joe Rigsby. <laughs> Joseph Andrew Rodell. Sarah Nicole Runyon. <laughs> Ashley Nicole Spent. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, Michaela Nicole Sumption Brown. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, Holly Taylor. In absentia, Elijah James Willingham. Please join me in congratulating these new Millican graduates. Will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science in Nursing please rise? <laughs> President Reynolds, I present to you today the following candidates who are eligible for a Bachelor of Science degree in Nursing from the College of Professional Studies. By the authority vested in me by the State of Illinois and the Millican Board of Trustees, and on behalf of the faculty of Millican University, I confer upon you the degree Bachelor of Science in Nursing, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Graduating cum laude, Brandy Lee Ann Adams. <laughs> Sierra Lynn Barnett. Graduating cum laude, Grace Elizabeth Burris. <laughs> David Katanis. <laughs> Bailey Marie Klaus. <laughs> Annalise Patrice Corey. Jordan Lee Goble. <laughs> Nelaney Nicole Harris. <laughs> Kiera Moran Henke. <laughs> Jen
Jaden Carolyn Lockard. Wade Michael Mills. Madison Marie Snow. Natalie Ann Snyder. Graduating cum laude, Olivia K. Stalter. Attica Walgy. JC Page Witches. Colin W. Wilson. Billy Grace Wooldridge. Aubrey Danielle Wright. Please join me in congratulating these new Millican graduates. It is now my pleasure to once again introduce Dean R.J. Podeski, who will present candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree from the Tabor School of Business. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree in the Tabor School of Business please rise? President Reynolds, I present to you today these candidates who are eligible for a Bachelor of Science degree from the Tabor School of Business. By the authority vested in me by the State of Illinois and the Millican Board of Trustees, and on behalf of the faculty of Millican University, I confer upon you the degree Bachelor of Science with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Graduating summa cum laude, Laura Kristen Atkinson. Mason James Brownlow. Sunshine Ray Faget. Graduating summa cum laude, Sean Patrick Griffin. In absentia, graduating magna cum laude, Samuel Richard Hagerman. <laughs> Eve Izabe. <laughs> Mara Lynn Kiefer. <laughs> In absentia, graduating magna cum laude, Allison M. Kite. In absentia, Caleb Michael Logan. Elijah Wynn McClinton. Jesse Ngoga. Tyler Ritz. Graduating magna cum laude, Jacob William Vietti. An honor scholar graduating summa cum laude, Isabella Marie Voss. Graduating summa cum laude, Kelsey Marie Wiak.
please join me in congratulating these new Millican graduates. Hold that thought, I'd like for you to do it one more time for all the graduates of Millican University today. To share in the significance of this day, I now ask Mr. Ron Branch, Vice Chair of the Millican Board of Trustees, to join me at the podium to offer his congratulatory words. Thank you, President Reynolds. Good afternoon. As Vice Chairman of the Millican University Board of Trustees, I have the great privilege of offering a few words of congratulations from the board. Graduates, it is with enthusiasm that I congratulate each and every one of you on your success here today. As Millican graduates, you have each in your own way experienced that which makes Millican distinctive. You are performance learning. You are professional success. You are democratic citizenship in our global environment. And I hope you feel today, more than any other day, that you have a life of meaning and value. At Millican University, our mission is to deliver on the promise of education. This afternoon, we see that promise fulfilled. On behalf of the Millican Board of Trustees, I give you my most sincere congratulations and best wishes for your future. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. It's now my pleasure to invite Millican Alumni Association Board Representative Lindsey Quick, Millican Class of 2015, to join me on stage and offer remarks on behalf of the Millican Alumni Association. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, President Reynolds. Um, on behalf of the Alumni Association it, uh, and my fellow Millican alumni all over the world, I am honored to congratulate you on this tremendous accomplishment and officially welcome you to the Millican Alumni Association. While your journey as a Big Blue student may be coming to an end, today you join an alumni community that is 36,000 people strong. That's a whole lot of Big Blue. Um, to welcome you to our ranks, the Alumni Association Board has a token of congratulations for you. It's an uncut key engraved with Millikan's name. So as you leave today and begin to open new doors and new endeavors, you are encouraged to stay connected to your Millikan University home. Please pick up your key and at the gown return table in the lower gallery after the ceremony. We also invite you and your family to come and join us directly after the ceremony for a congratulatory reception in the Perkinson Gallery just outside the auditorium doors in the lobby. We have your key, refreshments, and a chance to connect with faculty, staff, and friends. Again, we are so proud of your accomplishments. Now, I would like to invite Dalton Crum to join me on stage to lead the tassel turning ceremony. Dalton is from Mount Pleasant, Iowa, and is earning a Bachelor of Music degree in Music Business and Commercial Music from the College of Fine Arts today. Thank you. As someone who's normally in this building only for Vespers, it's kind of weird to stand here and actually see faces. So. Graduates, please rise. 
On behalf of Millican University, I congratulate you upon your graduation and welcome you as a fellow Millican alum. Millican hopes that you will continue to maintain ties with the university by sharing your time, talents, and triumphs as you are now all lifetime members of the Alumni Association. With starting my time here a semester late due to basic training and missing a year being deployed overseas, my time here has been a winding road. I think it's safe to say that we all have similar stories of our time here at Millican, stories of bad tests and good tests, heartbreak and love, LSB in the winery. <laughs> but at the end of all of those stories are us, here, ready for what lies ahead. Again, Millican University congratulates you upon achieving your goal of a degree in higher education. Let us now signify our graduation by the ceremonial gesture of moving our tassels from the right to the left. Oh, yeah. Congratulations, class of 2022. You may be seated for just a moment, because now I'm going to invite everyone in the auditorium who are able to stand to rise as we sing the Millican Alma Mater, led by Spencer Domer. You may be seated, we're almost done, I promise. <laughs> that was terrific, I'd love to hear you all sing that song again, but we'll wait. Again, let me offer our sincere congratulations to all of you, especially our newly minted graduates. Uh, know that today does not end our relationship. The folks who you were good friends with and mentors to you for the time that you were here with us are still interested in being a part of your lives and helping in whatever way they can. Millican is still your home, a place where you can come to be re-energized or to sort things out. We want your continued involvement so we can be better and can fulfill the promises that we make to students who choose Millican University as a place to be educated. We want you to visit often and never feel that you can't come home. We're here for you and want to support you in whatever way we can as you depart this place and begin your new lives as Millican graduates. I would ask that all of our guests please remain seated until the class of 2022 has left the auditorium. The platform party and faculty will be dismissed first, after which graduates will be dismissed by rows. You're welcome to offer your applause as a graduate's exit. Thank you all for your presence today.
<laughs> Want your folder back? Yeah, I'm letting you guys see all the music. Just give me your folder. Last one on mine. Can I give you somebody else's folder? <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's been four years. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.